How you doing everybody? Adam from developphp.com here once again with another exciting Flash Action Script 3.0 tutorial. Now before we do any learning, let's take a peek at the finished product and discuss what we're setting out to do. We have a little application that has sliding doors on it. And what we're setting out to do is make sure when we animate our sliding doors that the proper section comes into appearance just at the right time when it should, when those doors are opening back up again. And this tutorial comes courtesy of Mike425, who is a Develop PHP forum member. And he's the one that requested to get a little help on making the sliding doors happen correctly. So I told him I would put a little something together. And he said, OK, so that's why we're going through with it. All right, first thing to do is create a new Flash Action Script 3 file. And I'm just going to start from the very beginning. That way, people who might be following along or watching this video We'll have a better understanding of what we're trying to accomplish and how to make it. So you can choose to draw out your graphic elements right directly on stage in Flash using the tool set. But I happen to have some in Fireworks here that I'm going to use. So I have some little doors, one, two, three, four, and a cover. I'm going to grab all five of those objects. Control C, and then in Flash CS4, I'm going to paste them. Control V, into current frame as movie clip. OK, so it's 556 wide, 400 high. So let's make our stage match that. 556, 400. OK. And you can see it imported it as a movie clip. So all of those items are inside that movie clip. And I can name this layer whole clip or whatever you want. I'm going to double click inside of it. You can check out this layer folder the way it has all of those items in there. So you have the cover, bottom right door, bottom left door, top left door, top right door. So let's lock the cover layer and let's grab all four of those doors. So you see I have all four selected. I'm going to right click them. Convert to symbol. Make sure it's movie clip. Name it whatever you want in the library. OK. Now let's highlight it and give it an instance name of sliding doors. So now the movie clip that contains those four sliding doors has an instance name of sliding doors. It makes good sense, huh? Let's delete these layers. We don't need them. Let's rename this Sliding Doors because that's the layer that the Sliding Doors movie clip resides on. The layer above it, let's name that Cover. Now let's give it one more layer and rename that one Buttons. Now let's put a button on there or the shape of a button. You can use your tool set to put any kind of button you want. I'll use the Rectangle Primitive. All right, once your little shape is drawn, you can manipulate things. You can give it a gradient if you like. Go to Transform the Gradient. Using this little wheel on the end, you can transform that gradient to be any direction you want. OK, me like it that. Now let's put some text on it. I'm going to make mine static text. It doesn't have to be dynamic. Put it into place on the button. And I'm going to adjust the gradients in the color palette where I can see through it just a little bit, just for a little bit of nicer effect. So you can just pop these open and adjust your alpha. That's how you can see through it a little bit. Right click that, convert to symbol. This one I'm going to make a button. OK. Double click inside. And on the over state and the down state, I'm clicking F6. In the over state, I'm going to change the button just a little bit, make it brighter on the color palette, and take its alpha down a little bit. That'll work for me. OK, so there's one button. So once you have one button there, you can go into your library, duplicate that symbol, press OK, and now you have a copy of it. Just drag the copy out, and then you can go inside of that duplicate and change whatever you want. I'm going to do it one more time. I'm going to copy symbol 2. I'm going to copy the symbol 2 copy, duplicate that, OK, and there's my third button. I'll go inside and change that too. OK, so now when I press Control enter you can see what we've got, three buttons, and nothing happens when we click them yet. Now since the buttons are right here, that's where we're going to put our code. Let's make another layer and call it AS3, short for Action Script 3. And that's where we'll press F9 to open our Actions panel. And if that's not available, you can go up to Window, Actions. That'll open your Actions panel. That's where we'll put some code to have these buttons run these sliding doors. OK, before we program the buttons, let's knock out this door animation real quick. So highlight the door, the sliding doors movie clip, double click inside of it. Separate these out into layers. 
So hit the Create New Layer button three times. Grab this one, Control X, put it on the top layer. Control Shift V. Grab this one, Control X, put it on the next layer down. Control Shift V. Grab this one, Control X, put it on the one, the last one that's left. Control Shift V. So there's your four doors, and right above four doors, put a new layer and call that Frame Labels. Let's go out to maybe frame, I don't know, 20. Let's give it a frame label of close. On the first one, let's give that a label of open. Now let's extend that out to frame 40 by pressing F5. So now you can see my frame labels in there. And I'm going to use those frame labels to command, to have the buttons command this animation. So you can see where they are in the first frame. Let's go to frame 19. So on frame 19, I'm going to press F6. I'm going to do that on all four of those layers. Then I'm also going to go to frame 40 and do the same thing. F6, 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 F6. Actually, those should be on frame 20. So I'm going to move those over. You can just grab them and move them over. Okay, now, the ones in the center on frame 20, we're just going to simply grab them and move them. So I want to take it from this position here, so this one moves this way up, this one moves that way up, this one moves this way, and this one moves this way. So go ahead and do that. Okay, so once you get them directly in the corner, just make each corner meet up to the corner of your square or your empty hole behind it. So now you can see on frame 20, everything's wide open. You can go right in between and create classic tween on all of those. You can actually highlight them all at the same time. I'm just going to do them individually. Classic tween on all of those. And then you'll see you have a nice animation where they come, where they start at the close position, then they open, and they close. And you can just drag your playhead. So when these doors are open, behind them, that's where you want your page content that holds all your various pages. So let's go ahead and put a rectangle there. I'm just going to draw a rectangle primitive. So I'm going to create a new layer. Make sure it's on the bottom of everything. So drag it to the bottom. You can just grab these layers and drag them around. And that's where I'll put a rectangle primitive here. So in frame 20, I can see exactly what's going on. And I'm going to move that rectangle right into place. Put a little default text on it to say section 1. Let's make sure that text is white so we can see it, and a little bit bigger. There we go. Let's put it somewhere in the center. Alrighty, now let's highlight that and the rectangle, both of them. Right click them, convert to symbol. This is going to be a movie clip symbol. Okay, doesn't matter what it's named in the library. Now highlight it and give it an instance name of pages. Now you can double click that this is where you page out your sections so right here I'm going to put a new layer this is going to be for actions press F9 and put a stop action there because you don't want this movie clip to just repeatedly loop over the frames we're going to add a few more frames in here so just put a stop action on frame 1 now go to frame 2 you can even rename this layer pages frame 2 you can press F6 change the color of this to some different kind of color Let's change that text to say section 2 so now you'll see on frame 1 you have section 1, on frame 2 there's section 2. So that's how you can separate out and have different content on different pages here. And keep in mind that this can be more than just a rectangle and some text. It can be movie clips, animations, whatever you want to put in there. These can be individual movie clips if you like. So I just need one more section to make section 3. And let's change the color of this rectangle just so everything has a different color so you guys can see what's going on. Alright, so there's my three sections. One, two, three. And I made them different colors just so we see a distinct difference. Let's go back into our sliding doors movie clip. And on the same layer where we have the... Yeah, let's make it to where we can't see those doors there. On that same layer, layer six, which we can name that pages. Pages clip. I'm going to put a dynamic text field. And this is where the magic comes in. You're gonna, you guys are going to like this. This is slick. Let's just put some default text in there. And make sure that's a dynamic text field. 
It's given an instance name of go to page. Go to page underscore txt. We're going to put a 1 inside of it as a default value. And it doesn't really matter what color that text is because nobody's going to be able to see it. And this is going to be a way, it's going to be sort of a way to hold a variable, but in a more physical form that you know it's going to work. You can also do this through variables, but I think this is a lot easier. And if you have the access to a dynamic text field, you might as well. So this is what's going to happen. Right here on frame 1, we're going to put one more layer. Let's call that AS3 for ActionScript 3. We're going to command this movie clip with the instance name of pages to go to whichever frame, because it has different frames inside of it, you see? We're going to instruct that movie clip to go to whichever frame inside of it that this text field is holding. Right now it's holding frame 1, so it would go to frame 1. Well, it's already on frame 1. But if this was a 2, this would go to frame 2. If this was a 3, this would go to frame 3. So let's put in the code to do that. Let's say pages dot go to and stop. And then you simply put in the name of this text field, which was go to page underscore txt. Right there. Dot text. Go to page underscore txt dot text. I'm going to double click over here to go into the parent movie clip. And now I'm going to give these buttons instance names. BTN1. This one's going to be BTN2. This one will be BTN3. Now I can code those buttons out right here on our AS3 layer. Let's go inside this movie clip and make sure we can see those doors again. There we go. Now let's double click and go here. Now if you were to test your file at this point, you're going to see your doors are just closing and opening and closing and there's no control over them yet. And if you want, you can double click inside the sliding doors movie and on the AS3 layer, right there in frame 20, press F6, put a stop action right there. We're going to need that anyway. Now if you test, you'll see it opens like it should and stays open to the section. All right double click on the outside here, go back into that parent movie clip where your buttons are. The AS3 layer, press F9, open the actions panel. Oh, real quick, if you want to see how that works, check this out. Just change that to a 3. Now press Control Enter. You see that? Section 3 opened up. Change this to a 2. Booyah, baby. So that's how it's done now. Let me show you how to control that with those buttons that are in the parent movie clip. Turn that back to a 1. Alright, so we're in the parent movie clip of the sliding doors and we're going to code to these buttons now. AS3 layer, press F9. Okay, let's type in function. Click 1. Open parentheses, close parentheses. Inside the parentheses, let's type in event, colon, mouse event, Outside the parentheses, let's put colon void, open the curly brace, go down a couple lines and close the curly brace. So there's your click one function for button number one. So what we have to do is say btn one dot add event listener. Let's make sure this is a capital E. Open parentheses, mouse event dot click, all caps, comma, and the name of the function you want to fire off. That's click one up there. Close parenthesis, semicolon. Now, any code that you want to happen when btn1 is pressed, that be this one, that's what you put right here inside of this function. So what we want to happen is we want to make sliding doors go to and play close this frame label. And I'll show you why in just a second. So make sure you get the right instance name sliding doors dot go to and play open parenthesis close parenthesis semicolon and inside you give it a frame label of close now before that happens you want to change that text so let's go inside here and change this text field to dynamic text field so we can do whatever we want let's get the name of that text make sure you get the proper name let's go back to the parent movie clip right here we put go to page dot 
go to page underscore txt dot text is equal to one for this button. Make sure you refer to sliding doors before that. You're accessing the sliding doors movie clip and then you're accessing the dynamic text field that's sitting on stage inside of that movie clip and you're making it a one and then you instruct sliding doors to go to and play close. Now watch if I just take this whole thing put one there, one there let's just change these to a two. This one's three, 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 and three. And I think that's it. Let's press control enter. Section one opens up when the application loads. Let's click section three. Isn't that pretty neat? And it changes when everything's closed exactly when it should. You just watched how I structured the whole thing out. You know how exactly how it's working. And if you want to put sound in there, all you have to do is go into this part of the movie clip, the sliding doors, where you see this animations running, that's where you put those sounds. I mean, you can load sounds right into your, you can go to file, import, any kind of sound you want. Just go and get a Star Trek sliding door sound or whatever. Import it into your library, and once it's in your library, you can put it on a frame. So you would just make a new layer, call it, and name it music or sound, sound effects. But I'm going to leave that up to you to do. So I just wanted to show people how you can have content behind sliding doors like that and show you how to change the page content just at the precise time when you should. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that lesson and you can get the source code at developerphp.com. I have the source file, so I'll have a link to the source file in the video description area that you can click. You can go and grab this source file that I made here for this tutorial, and you can see all kind of other Flash tutorials we got there at developerphp.com. Okay, peace. I'll see you guys next time.